Hey, Blue Table fans, Sean here. I don't know what that was. So anyway, listen, I can't shockwave every time. Actually, I can. And, oh, yeah. Oh, fantastic. So uh, before I launch into Theory Hammer, uh, I'm reading this book called The Untethered Soul. I like those kinds of books. Not a preachment, mind you, just something interesting. And it talks about that the possibility to tap into limitless energy uh, with your your own mind, and you know, like where? Because people, where, John, where does your enthusiasm come from? Well, I I'm in my zone of genius. You know, I. It's funny because if if I'm with other humans, and or if I'm if that red light is on, oh man, I love that. Fantastic, bring that up. Like I'm in the zone, everything else fades away, and it's really good times. Quite frankly, well, and when I'm doing this, I am talking to thousands of people, which, because typically you get two or 3,000 at least that eventually see every video. Uh, 1,500 is kind of the minimum. So even for the rambles, they get that. So anyway, and, and another part of it is, um, and, and it's, I, I guess it's an old concept that you see in a lot of different places. The idea of, uh, uh, what did the author call it? A seed of consciousness. That that voice in your mind is like worrying about things and having scenarios and trying to solve everything. Really, you know, you need to give that guy a break. And because, you know, th this has very little effect on what's going on around you. And, th and that's something I've been very interested in for many years. People are like, Sean, you've worked so hard, and da da da, you know, a little pat on the back for the entrepreneur, which is nice. Don't get me wrong, bring, keep those coming. But I haven't felt that way. I felt like, you know, things have gone well in spite of all the worry. Yeah, and I'm just like, yeah, I just worried and made myself miserable for nothing. And things have gone well, like effortlessly. And I'm, and I'm, in, I'm interested in that phenomenon. I call it inspired action which is if you're in the zone, that's when you're doing the best for yourself and, and people around you. So anyway, the idea of seat of consciousness is that you kind of draw back and you're just watching these thoughts float by and you don't, you're, just, you're just okay with it. You're just like, you know what? I'm, th I'm worrying about this, but you know what? There's no reason to worry about that. I acknowledge that I'm thinking that. It's like, oh, isn't that interesting? You brain, you know, you kind of take your brain out and go put it in front of you and just go, oh, okay, why is he? So, and the book is like, um, imagine it's another person. Like, would you take love advice from this person that like concocts the worst scenario or business advice from this other person that's like constantly like worrying and telling you how it can go wrong? Well, no, you wouldn't. You kind of get, you just be like, listen, I, you're fired. I, I, I'm, I'm letting you go. I don't, I don't need that. And so, I've just been, just been experimenting with this and, and getting some peace for a change. Uh, because, you know, BTP's been awesome, but my brain has just amplified every, you know, bump in the road to like this spine jarring amplitude. And, you know, you just, uh, you gotta find your center. I've gotta find my center. And uh, I, think I'm, I think I'm getting close, it's pretty exciting. All right, let's talk theory here. That, that's enough, of, I'm closing, closing the book on that topic. So how long did it take me to intro that? Four minutes, you guys had to endure four minutes. Oh my gosh. All right, so talking to Thomas last night, as I mentioned in the Skyweaver video, and well, it was actually today, it was this morning. Ooh, boy, I've been going. So, uh, and this is my theory. So, uh, okay, imagine, this is about, this is about like the idea of, like if you ever played a game of 40K and by the time it got to your first turn or second turn, the game was kind of over. You know, you just were crippled. And a lot of these tournament lists are like that, that whole idea of alpha strike, that something comes on, it just blows something up wretchedly, and then either it was a suicide run and they just kind of crippled a critical thing, or it, that unit, God forbid, either continues to cause a problem or they actually like escape. 
and you, oh, and you can't do anything. And that's what appeals to me so much about the Harlequins, because I'm like, you know what? You actually could get in, and you know, and if and if you danced it right, you could be okay. Of course, with a blob army like orcs, ugh, you know, they just kind of like squat in the middle of the board, and it's only like 14 inches to the edge of the board, and you know. <laughs> there, so their reach is just everywhere and your little glass hammers blow up to pieces. So we shall see. We shall see if I can pull that off. All right, let's continue. So hold on, I'm working this through. Okay, so imagine you've got a hundred guys. It's all infantry. And, and they, they, have, they have like one type of attack, whatever it is. And then the opposing army is consisted of the exact same guys, a hundred of them, right? Now, each one of your little guys, your soldiers, has a, it has a killing power and it has a reach. So the killing power, excuse me, the reach could be how far their ranged weapon is. It could be how far they can charge, whatever it is. Now, so it doesn't matter what's going to happen after that. We're only looking at this one turn is what is their reach? So if they don't have reach, then they're eliminated from the equation for the purpose of this exercise. And if they have, uh, and then they have killing power. So that means one, if one, if, well, if 10 guys shoot in a volley, how many of the enemy guys are gonna be wiped out for that? So if you have 100% killing power, it means if 10 of your guys shoot, on average, 10 enemy guys are going to die, basically. Now, this is complicated in 40K by the idea of points values. So you gotta like say, okay, if it's 10 guys at 10 points each and it's 100 points, and their killing power is 100%, well, let's say an enemy tank costs 100 uh, points. So that means can the 10 guys reliably, pretty much 100% of the time, kill that enemy tank? So can they, can they, point for point, can they, can they do it? And again, the Skyweavers, man, they're just, ha, ah, with like four attacks on the charge and that strength five AP two melee attack. It's just like, they can just, they can just wipe out. And there's a lot of things that are, that are like that. So anyway, so if you had 100, if you're all 100 of your guys had the reach, and they had 100% killing power, that would mean that game would only be who gets the first turn. That's it. I got the first turn, my guys all can shoot, and they all can just wipe out everything on the other side of the board. Of course, 40K, and well, I'm gonna say any other game, they're designed so that that really doesn't happen. You really don't get that. But when you're analyzing not only placement, of your models, because in 40K, uh, it's not like fantasy where you can only shoot to the front arc, you can only charge to the front arc. You can charge all around, you can shoot all around, typically. So, um, sorry, so I'm thinking about how I really need a drink of water. So in 40K, it's obviously not that way. You don't have 100% killing power. But you can analyze a unit in terms of their reach and in terms of, you know, in a volley or whatever it is, shooting or charging in, do, how many points on average are they gonna wipe out of enemy units? Is it the same as them? In which case that'd be 100%. Is it 50%? So now think about that. If you get the first turn, or the turn in which you've maneuvered well and not lost, you've lost little or no guys. Uh, if on that turn you could have 50% killing power and, and your reach is there to deliver it, then 50% of the enemy army is gone in that turn. Could be the first turn, which is not a fun game, or it could be in a subsequent turn, doesn't matter. You're eliminating that amount before that before their reach and killing power can be applied back to you. So, and that's ergo the term alpha strike or first strike. So I've been thinking about this and I'm like, what units have that? And what units have, you know, 
kind of the getting away factor, getting away with it factor. So for example, um, hold on, I can do this. It's uh, a flying hive tyrant. Oh my gosh, what an amazing unit. So flexible, the delivery, the reach is incredible with a 12 to 24 inch zoom. I think that's what it's called, like flying. And then all around shooting, uh, the brain leech worms I think have 24 inch range. So maybe it's 18, but still good. And then the defenses. So flying, you can't be charged, period. And you, you might be grounded, so that's kind of a downside there. But you, and you're only hit on sixes. It's snapshots. And some weapons can't even shoot at you at all because they're blast weapons. So I'm like, what a unit. It's like 250-ish points. But the killing power is amazing on this thing with the psychic scream, and I think that's what it's called, and the twin link devourer with brain leech worms. Amazing, getting charged, killing other flyers. That's why I've got this army over here with five flying hive tyrants, and I'm like, that's a thing, guys. I mean, that is just, phew, geez, do you, how about six of them? How about eight of them in a 2,000 point game? I mean, what if you just ran that? Could you, I mean, is that workable? Oh, it's incredible. So it makes, it makes me think about, you know, kind of analyzing units either individually or as a role in an army. Uh, back to Harlequins, because obviously Harlequins are on my mind. Um, by the way, still looking for a client. I've got a slot open for, you know, jumping on board and doing an army in tandem. So, um, all right, because it's me and another client, and then I think we like get it all going at the same time. And I've got ideas, by the way, for like conversions and posing and different elements that we might include. Oh, it's good. I'm going to show you that as we go along, because uh, my stuff is getting assembled. Uh, Roberto picked it up today. There's going to be magnetization. Uh, I really don't like the Neuro Disruptor pistol that's in there that has kind of the clumpy crystal thing, so I'm going to invent my own thing. Uh, probably get, because I like the Harlequin's Kiss, which is like wrist mounted, very elegant, but it doesn't have, um, I'm not going to use those, because the Harlequin's Kiss is clearly not the best choice. And uh, it, I mean, it's cheaper, but it's just, it's not that great. Uh, so I'm going to chop those off, put a dark Eldar, um, whatever it is, splinter pistol on there. Because it has sort of that oval chamber that you can make like glowing or a jewel or something like that. So oh, I say yes to that. Very excited to try those, try those conversions. So anyway, um, yeah, that's what interests, because I think Harlequins with the jet bikes is going to be a really, really strong combination, because tough, mobile, cheap is, uh, is a good mix in there. All right, guys, that's all I got to say. It is, it is really late on, well, not really late. It's, um, oh my gosh, yeah, it's quarter to ten, and uh, I'm just, just wrapping up my, wrapping up my work day. So uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, I hope you got your inspiration for the day.